this course we have talked about different aspects of modeling in engineering practice mathematical model that takes an input and provides an output now the model equations we solve using numerical methods sometimes and sometimes we use analytical techniques we are entering now in a regime where models are not there instead we have lots of data lots of input output pairs we have to use them instead of a model and from that we have to give a prediction what will happen as the output for a given input for instance if you want to predict what will happen for tomorrow's weather you do not have an equation that you can readily solve and get an idea about it if you want to predict what will be the longevity of a living person you again do not have an equation to solve so what we do there is that we take data and from the, those data we try to make a prediction and that is the part we are going to learn now the subject that deals with such problems nowadays we are calling that machine learning and a small part of that we are going to study in upcoming weeks particularly in this lecture we will study the problem of using and interpreting experimental results we will study two different types of models that are mechanistic which we are dealing with so far and empirical models and we will see this new topic regression what is it and what is the utility of regression let us take an experiment we have a conducting wire here which is conducting electricity the electrical current i subjected to a potential v this is an experiment we are conducting where we can vary this potential and we can measure this i how we can vary this potential or how we can measure this i etc that is the question we are not asking that will be dealt in different subjects but here we assume that we vary the potential v very very accurately given certain value i can set it with extreme accuracy and then i measure the current using an instrument this experiment i conduct at the end of the experiment i know that the theory that which i have learned in my high school that suggests that i the current will be equal to v by r where r is resistance of this particular conducting wire now this is a model that i equals v by r we call this a mechanistic model why because we know certain underlying mechanism from which this model operates this comes from the conservation of charge but that is not the point here the point here is that this model is well known and well accepted by the community based on my experiment if i try to give a different model i have to work really really hard because i have to prove that ohm's law is not right so that would be a lot of work we are not going in that direction instead we are asking a very different question here we know the model and this is a mechanistic model we know the underlying mechanism even if we don't know the underlying mechanism we know that an underlying mechanism exists which gives us an acceptable model of this phenomena now our problem is different our problem is that i do not know r i have a very accurate v not one accurate v in fact i have many accurate v n numbers of v and for which i have this experimental data i for each of this vi i have the corresponding ii uh, these are my experimental data now i have some current i star for which i want to calculate the v v star i do not have an experimental data for this i want to calculate it so here the problem is i do have a model if i knew the r then i could have calculated i star 
given the vister if r was known but i don't have r instead what i have is bunch of experimental data n number of experimental data in fact n is much greater than 1 so how to go about it that is the question this looks like a very simple question but this is the question we are going to ask now if you plot these results that we have received from the measurement what you will see that these red dots are my experimental points for every v i got some i and when i put it it looks like this now in ideal world this i and v they should be related linearly and the slope will be given by this one by r but we see that it's not like that they are more or less scattered they look they have a linear sort of relationship they were they are scattered so the theory that we know and the experiment that we conducted here there is a difference between these two and the difference is that this i is v by r plus something what is this something well this something is a zero mean random noise and this is independent of v this is a noise that is coming from large number of sources that are not in our control this noise is not a result of some mistake that the experimental is doing it is also not the results of there is some problem in the instrument but there are many many sources from which this noise might come so for instance there will be even if you control is very accurately there will be minor changes in room temperature where you are conducting the experiment you cannot avoid that you will try to minimize of course that fluctuation but you really cannot avoid that and similarly there are many more uncertainties that might happen this epsilon i which is a noise and that noise is zero mean it does not mean that if i take the noise from all the experiment i sum them up and uh, take the average it will give me zero it's not like that what it tells us that this noise is random in random in in this sense that if i carry out the experiment for one particular v and i do large number of experiments and then i average it the average of this noise will go to zero and in fact the average of large number of experiments then will be given by this i equals v by r which should be our mechanistic model if that does not happen then we have to ask question about the model or about the quality of our experiment so in short if i average over many experiment i should approach the mechanistic model that is available but now we are not dealing with that problem now we are dealing with a problem where i have such noise this noise is random this is independent of v you do same experiment twice you get two different noise so it is a problem based on this what do you do how we can get this i star for v equals b star based on this experimental results that we have and this experimental results contain noise so that is the question we are going to study in this lecture and in upcoming lecture so now that our theory is i equals v by r but our experiments contain noise and because of that when i put it in a scatter plot my experimental result they don't look like this i equals v by r what can i do then well our goal is of course to use the experimental results and find the value of r once we get r then we will be able to find i star for certain given value of v star so the question in this case is how to find r from the given data set v i i i and we can start solving equations so for example these are each i gives an equations so i have n number of equations here for i equals 1 to n and i have n plus 1 unknown because all 
this random noise they are unknown and r is our unknown i i and v i these are known variable so i have n plus 1 unknown and i have n equation clearly i cannot have an unique solution of this system linear algebra doesn't allow me to have an unique solution of such system so this is a completely hopeless endeavor the second approach is that we completely neglect this noise and we think that well all right this noise is small anyway it, sh it should be small otherwise there is problem in experiment and it is random so let us just forget about it and let us write i is vi equals r but now what happens i the goal is we have to find the value of r now what happens is that we have the number of equations in because i goes from 1 to n and as we have assumed that n is much greater than 1 we have lot many equations then the unknown because i have only one unknown that is r in a system like this you cannot possibly have a solution it's you can rarely have a solution in fact in general you will not have a solution if you have a solution you are lucky it's not going to happen mostly so then both the approach we see here here we have n plus one unknown and here we have only one unknown number of equations are n in both cases they will not give us anything we have to figure out a different way of dealing with this and that is what regression does so the philosophy here is that neither will try to evaluate effect nor will neglect effect we'll consider the effect of noise but we'll consider it in a way that we can get an unique solution of art both the approaches of neglecting noise or both evaluating noise they will not work and regression is the technique that we are going to use now to solve such problems now of course this goes a problem where i do have a model but then there are many cases in reality where i do not have a model here i do have a model but we do not know the value of this parameter r but what happens if i do not have a model so for instance the example that we are talking about you want to predict longevity of a living animal how we are going to predict that we do not have an equation or set of equations to solve to get the answer all we have or all, the best we can have is some data of similar animal their longevity and some of their conditions based on which you believe that longevity can be determined here we do not have a model at all so what do we do in such cases we have discussed so far this mechanistic type model where we know the mechanism such as this b equals ir type ohm's law type model the models that we discussed diffusion equation model the models that we discussed this predator prey type model based on certain mechanism we have decided a model and it's good when we have th that kind of model but in many cases we don't have that kind of model all we have are data and therefore we have to define certain model which we call empirical model in contrast to mechanistic model which we will develop from data and such models we often call them data driven models they are derived from data we don't know the underlying mechanism but we only know the data so let us take an example here here we have taken a particular rocket propellant solid propellant and such propellant in this case this is a hypothetical propellant which in this case their shear strength changes with age so here in this table i have done several experiments 10 experiments here where i where i have taken propellant sample and their age 
I have seen that starting from this 15.5 to 11, some randomly I have taken samples and I have measured their shear strength. So here in first column, this is the experiment number. Then second column, this is the age of the propellant in week. And third column is the shear strength. Now, I want that given a time, given a particular time, what would be the shear strength of propellant at that time or at that age, given certain age of propellant, what will be the shear strength? Now, what will be the model here? Well, it's most likely that we don't have a clear model here, but even we have, then the model will be very complex. Model has to come from the atomistic consideration, probably it will be very complex. It will be too complex to implement. So we may not have a mechanistic model. And even if we have, then it would be too complex to handle. Then what do we do then? If I take these numbers and I plot in a scatter plot, I see that this will be the shear strength in y axis and age in week. So, when you look at this, it looks like there is a sort of linear type trend, but that's all we can say for now in absence of a mechanistic model. So, it looks like that a linear type empirical model is likely. So, here we forget about that what is that underlying mechanism that is connecting propellant age with sheer strength of the pro propellant and rather we are trying to build a model just looking at the data and looking at the data it looks like they have a linear type relationship and this is the kind of model building that we'll do using regression. Once we build the model, this empirical model will help us to predict strength of propellant for a given age. That is, once again, the final purpose of regression, finding the dependent variable for a given independent variable. So now we come back to our initial problem, that is the current voltage problem. We try to fit such line using regression and this line slope of this line will give us the value of one by r is that the value of r well we say this is an estimation of r this is not exactly the we cannot claim this is the value of r but we estimate r but how did you bring this line here we bring this line here in a way that we can see that this line will of course match this i equals v by r the line should match the mechanistic model if we say that this is not the model of v and r this blue line then we'll be violating the mechanistic model it must be a straight line so we are fitting this line in such a way that the effect of noise on the estimated r is minimized so noise we don't know we have not calculated noise but the effect of R in estimated noise is minimized. So that is what we have tried. So we'll see what it is. We had this n number of equations here. And then of course, we are bringing certain other condition of minimization of this effect of noise. And then we are getting this line. Otherwise, we will not get this line. So we'll see how to do it. But then what is the fundamental goal of regression? Well, we can have two types of models. One is mechanistic. When the mechanistic model is available, then we are estimating R. But when the mechanistic model such as V equals I are here, this is available. But when it is not available, then our goal is that to develop an empirical model. And if the mechanistic model is available, then we develop the estimation 
of certain parameters such as R in this case. And in either way, finally, our goal is to estimate the dependent variable such as this I star here at some point of interest that is our V star. Regression, of course, this is a big area and this is a part of machine learning. Machine learning, what it does is that it learns from data. And in this course, we'll talk only a small part of it. Regression by itself is a completely different topic and could be a completely standalone course. So now to summarize, regression, this is a technique which we did not discuss the technique yet, but we will discuss in upcoming classes. This is a technique that we are going to use to develop models or estimating the parameters of a model from data. These data are usually experimental. And after we get the model and the parameter, wherever, whatever we want to get, the final goal of regression is to give us the estimate of the value of dependent variable for certain given value of independent variable. For instance, in this case, we are trying to estimate this I star for certain given value of independent variable V star. That, is, that was the goal finally. That is where we wanted to go. For your exercise, you list five examples of mechanistic model that you have learned in different courses where you can have certain input. Then you solve some equations probably. It could be linear equations, ODs, PDs, etc. And you get some output. They are mechanistic model because you will find those equations are derived based on certain mechanisms in mind. And then you list five scenarios where this empirical model could be useful, where mechanistic models probably are not there, but even if it is there, it is too complex to be of any use. That's all for this lecture. Thank you. And I'll see you in next class.